tonight why you may be seeing fewer Fiesta medals this year, all thanks to the coronavirus. Plus, a city councilman is leading an effort to create a new city commission which would represent renters in San Antonio. And the latest from the campaign trail, Democratic candidates heading to new battleground states after the results from the New Hampshire primary. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. A second case of coronavirus confirmed in California. That means there are now 14 cases here in the U.S. Both patients are being treated at a hospital at the University of California, San Diego. They were evacuated from Wuhan, China, ground zero of this virus outbreak. About 60 other cases in the U.S. are still pending confirmation. So far, the coronavirus has infected more than 14,000 people across the world with the death toll now topping 1100 in China. Meantime, back here at home, the outbreak could have an impact on one of San Antonio's biggest celebrations. Monarch Trophy Studios, which supplies a lot of the Fiesta medals you see, says there could be fewer this year because of the coronavirus. The outbreak has led to some factories in China having to shut their doors, including several that make Fiesta medals in bulk. Monarch Trophy owner Charlie Drago says he's been in contact with the facilities there in China where some workers haven't been allowed to return to their jobs. Now that it's getting bigger and bigger, um, all of a sudden it dawned on us what happens if they can't go back to work. Drago says they already have 40 to 50 designs pre-made and metals can still be made locally. He says there's the possibility those factories could open up on Monday. Between 2008 and 2018, the median rent in San Antonio increased from around $860 to just over $1,000, $1,002. That's according to data from the company apartment list. While rents continue to rise here, wages, not so much. Now City Councilman Roberto Trevino is trying to create a renter's commission that would represent renters across the city. Tiffany Huertas explains this commission's mission and the impact that it could have. I think a renter's commission is a great idea given the fact that we are having a lot of new development come into the neighborhood. Terry Castillo lives on the west side and is a member of the historic West Side Residents Association, which focuses on helping residents with issues in the community. She says renters are dealing with rising rent and evictions. District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino says he's seen this issue firsthand. We've gone to several eviction courts uh, and, and seen uh, what a lot of renters are going through when it comes to the eviction rates, which are alarming. There's a lot of people that are, that, that are being evicted every single day. It's almost a thousand a month. Last year in June, Trevino filed a council consideration request to initiate the creation of San Antonio Renters Commission to help with these issues. The Renters Commission would be solely focused on, on renters and, and the, the challenges and opportunities that, that, that uh, we can uh, provide for uh, you know, folks who might have issues like displacement like eviction. The Renters Commission would advise the City Council on matters related to affordable housing accessibility, transportation, renter laws and rights, and much more. The Housing Commission has been looking at housing affordability, has been looking at issues of home ownership. Uh, this, I think, again, it, it, it complements uh, those efforts because this is about renters. Trevino says the development of the Renters Commission is in the beginning stages. I believe that our, our renters uh, deserve a, a commission that is made up solely of renters, uh, a, a commission that is uh, representative, uh, much like their city council, in that it's a single member representation, uh, making sure that, that we have uh, representation from all corners of the city. I think a renters commission would be pivotal in shaping the, the discussion regarding housing that's going on right now. Trevino is planning a Renters Commission Town Hall later this month. There, they will gather feedback from the community. Now in March, Trevino will bring the information they collected and presented to the Culture and Neighborhood Services Committee. Eventually, the City Council will have to approve whether to create a Renters Commission. Myra? All right, we'll follow it. Thanks, Tiffany. A member of the now indicted former Bear County Precinct 2 Constable's administration now fired. Mark Garcia has been let go from his position in that office as a captain. Garcia is accused of making false statements under oath and faces a felony charge of aggravated perjury and three charges of official oppression. Garcia and Michelle Barrientes Vela, the former Precinct 2 Constable, have both been indicted. 
You can find a complete history of the allegations against them right now on our website at ksat.com. Coming up tomorrow, the San Antonio City Council is expected to vote on something that could impact the future of pre-K 4SA. The council is expected to decide if the one eight cent sales tax that helps fund that program should be on the ballot in May. The tax was approved back in 2012 and it expires next year, but Pre-K 4SA says it still needs the funding. According to the Bearfax KSAT Rivard report poll just released, more than two thirds of people support extending that tax. A huge fire at a California apartment complex overnight, some new legal trouble for actor Jesse Smollett, and a man dies after releasing his pit bull on police. Here's tonight's nine at nine. Two capital murder charges have been filed against a 36 year old man who's accused of killing another man over a marijuana debt and then returning home to kill his common law wife Tuesday morning. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say 36 year old Michael Morales stabbed 37 year old Felix Garcia with a screwdriver. Sheriff Javier Salazar says he then went back to his house and fatally shot 45 year old Mary Sanchez after she got upset about Garcia's killing. And the next door neighbor says she's only lived here for a few weeks, but she constantly heard fighting coming from the suspect's house. Reasons why she's not really surprised by the violence. Two police detectives injured in a shooting in Northeast Baltimore. The officers were trying to serve a warrant for attempted murder when that shooting happened. The suspect was killed in the shootout. The officers are now being treated for what police say are non-life threatening injuries. Two people were hurt and about 100 other people were evacuated during a fire at a Tustin, California apartment complex. As many as 100 apartment units in the large two story building have been damaged or destroyed. The fire required 120 firefighters to get it under control. The cause of this fire is now under investigation. Meantime, a woman was killed in a house fire in San Antonio this morning. Fire crews were called to the home on Briar Meadow. They say heavy flames and a gas leak made it hard for firefighters to make their way in. Once they did get inside, they found the woman's body in a position that appeared as if she was trying to escape. No word on what caused that fire. A grand jury has indicted former Empire actor Jesse Smollett for allegedly lying to authorities. In January of last year, Smollett claimed he'd been attacked by two men who yelled racist and homophobic slurs at him. Chicago police said Smollett staged the attack on himself and he was arrested and charged with 16 counts of felony disorderly conduct. Those charges were later dismissed. The city of Chicago has sued the actor for the cost of its original investigation into his allegations, but he's now been indicted on charges. Newly released video shows the inside of an Ohio school bus when it crashed and left eight students injured. A crash report says 42 year old Joseph Thornton was driving a Ford Mustang when he ran a red light and hit that bus. It went off the road and flipped onto its side. Injuries to the kids and the bus driver were not life threatening. A man who reportedly released his pit bull on officers during a traffic stop has died. Police in New Jersey say they arrested 54 year old John Baker on Monday. Police say he was driving a semi truck erratically and the dog was inside with him. Officers say they forced him to stop and despite multiple warnings not to release the dog, he did so. The dog was then fatally shot. Baker was arrested but died at a hospital after apparently suffering a seizure. The cause of his death is under investigation. A Texas man says he killed a wild hog with his crossbow after the animal went on a rampage on his property. His surveillance cameras caught the hog going after his dogs. Then the animal charged at him and his wife. The homeowner later came face to face with the animal behind his garage. He was still standing here on the front porch. And so when he saw me, I mean, it's something like out of a movie, the pig just came running straight at me. The man says at that point, he fired the crossbow. Good news on the climate change front. Global emissions of carbon dioxide in 2019 were level with those of 2018, according to a report released by the International Energy Agency. Overall, 33 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide were emitted worldwide from energy use in 2019. But considering the world economy expanded by nearly 3%, no increase is a sign of progress. To read more about these nine stories, head to ksat.com slash news at nine.
Good evening. Well, after a damp and gray first half of the work and school week, we saw some big improvement today. We had those early morning showers and storms gave us some much needed rain. Sky stayed cloudy for the first half of the day, but then we saw some nice clearing this afternoon, some sunshine, and that is a hint of things to come for the next couple of days. So we're going to see a lot more sun through the end of the week, but things are going to be staying pretty cool. There's no big warm up in store until really early next week. Things look nice and lovely for Valentine's Day. We'll get into that forecast for you. Clouds will start to roll back in by the weekend, but as you'll see, rain chances not very impressive over the next week or so. So I'm glad we did get some soaking rain late last Last night and early this morning. It's cool out there right now. 48 at Randolph, 48 over in Seguin, 51 at the airport here in San Antonio, and we'll see temperatures fall to near 40 degrees through early tomorrow morning. And we do have a couple of cold mornings ahead as we finish out the week. 40 tomorrow morning, close to freezing on Friday morning, still in the 40s on Saturday, and then a bit of a warming trend for our morning low temperatures as we get into the weekend. But Rain not working back into the forecast. We could see some isolated showers Tuesday of next week with another front, but look for the next few days through the weekend. No chance of rain, maybe a few sprinkles on Monday, and then that front will roll in on Tuesday and we'll have a slightly better chance of rain. But uh, I think we're going to take a break with the good rain chances for at least maybe a week or so. Tonight skies will be staying clear 40 degrees your low temperature winds about 5 to 10 miles per hour, but tomorrow through the course of the day winds could be a little bit breezy at times not really windy, but a little bit breezy and that could make things feel pretty chilly in the morning 62 your afternoon high temperature under sunny skies north northeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour jumping ahead to Valentine's Day on Friday. The nice weather will hang around, so we're looking at a lot of sun through Friday afternoon, uh, mostly clear skies as we get into Valentine's evening, uh, but no rain in the forecast and it will be cool though. So if you're like me and you like have to plan out your outfits, you know, ahead of time, jacket or sweater, uh, you'll have to work that in for uh, any Valentine's Day dinner plans or anything like that. Overall, though, really nice weather settling in for the next couple of days. Taking a look at the weekend cloud cover will start to work back in. We'll start to warm back up closer to 80 degrees as we get into Sunday and then President's Day on Monday. Next frontal boundary rolls in looks like early on Tuesday. That'll bring us our 20% chance of showers and then that will cool things down for us once again. But really nice weather ahead to finish up the week after a pretty damp and gray start. Myra. All right, thanks, Katie. It is a boost for small business. That's the, at the heart of a new partnership between Bank of America and Hemisphere. As a way to invest in small business, the company is giving Hemisphere a $750,000 anchor grant, which will be put toward turning one of the houses at Hemisphere into a small business. Today's donation is the largest corporate foundation grant Hemisphere has received since Yanaguana Garden opened in 2015. The $750,000 grant is primarily going to the 19th century Cush House to design, develop this into being ready for a small business to come in and then add to the vibrance in this community. So to be able to be a contributor to the environment that's being created down here for everybody within San Antonio to enjoy. Hemisphere also unveiling some new signage today, recognizing the gift. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. One day after the New Hampshire primary, the race for the Democratic presidential nomination still unsettled. Now the candidates are moving on to new political battlefields. Senator Bernie Sanders hoping his first place finish in New Hampshire propels him to more victories. Meanwhile, Pete Buttigieg closing close in second place is continuing his line of attacks against the front runner's self-declared socialist platform. He's got an approach that says you're either for a revolution or you got to be for the status quo. I think we're going to do just fine in Nevada, uh, very well in South Carolina, and I think uh, we got a real shot on Super Tuesday to win a whole lot of states. 
Meanwhile, Senators Amy Klobuchar, Elizabeth Warren, and former Vice President Joe Biden vowing to fight on after finishing in New Hampshire third, fourth, and fifth, respectively. Taking a look now at some of today's top stories, Americans are now in more debt than ever before. Some of that debt coming from new homeowners. Interest rates for mortgages dipped below 4% in 2019 for the first time in three years, making it more affordable for many to buy homes. But when it comes to spending, U.S. households are putting more on credit. According to the Federal Reserve, outstanding credit card debt grew by $57 billion in 2019, and total household debt rose by $193 billion, setting a new record of $14 trillion for Americans. That's more than in 2008, when the U.S. was on the verge of recession. The Senate is a step closer to restraining the president's ability to declare war. Today, senators passed a war powers resolution motion in a 51 to 45 vote. That resolution sets up a final vote to limit President Donald Trump's power to use military action without congressional approval. That vote is expected to happen tomorrow. This comes as lawmakers continue to debate the president's motive for a drone strike that killed Iran's top military commander. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has voted in favor of building a women's history museum in Was at Washington's National Mall. The measure passed 374 to 37. Besides creating a women's history museum, this bill would also establish a council to make recommendations for its design, planning, and construction. One of the bill's co-sponsors, Representative Carolyn Maloney of New York, said, quote, this is about giving women, all women, our rightful place in history, end quote. The next step for that bill is Senate approval. Valentine's Day is on Friday, and while it's all hearts and chocolates for some people, that's not the case for everybody. For some, the day can trigger feelings of sadness or loneliness, even making people feel overwhelmed or pressured. Today, KSAT hosted a live stream on our website with psychiatrist Dr. Harry Croft, who answered some of your questions about dating and relationships. You can find that full live stream right now at KSAT.com. Just look for it under the San Antonio Questions tab. Let's go to KSAT.com right now to find out what is trending tonight with Ferris Sabawi. Myra, I'm always happy to be here, as you know, and we got a ton of fun stories to share with you from KSAT.com. Awesome. So let's just get into it. Uh, you know, uh, when it's the first birthday, it's always a very special thing to oh, see your child's yeah. first birthday. It's a big deal. Yeah, but for a pit master, it's a little bit different, <laughs> and this is... Uh, it's pretty Texas as it gets, I, I must say. Uh, Kalisa Morales turned one year old, and uh, instead of giving them the, you know, the traditional cake smash where you give the child a little cake and let them mess with it, they instead gave her a whole platter of ribs for her birthday. <laughs> it looks like she liked it. Well, she loves it. Uh, according to the story and, and according to her parents, um, you know, she got an insatiable taste for ribs at eight months old. She, uh, once she got a taste of them, I think off her mom's plate, couldn't put it down ever since. And uh, I guess that's where the love story started between uh, Kalista and these ribs. Uh, so really cute story. Uh, this photo has gone viral, of course. Uh, yeah, so it's adorable. It really is. It, it's it's uh, so cute. I love the setup behind it. We've seen like Whataburger birthdays and we've seen all kinds of things, but I think this is kind of a first. Yeah, I'm sure there will be more. Oh, oh, there will definitely. Uh, hopefully more ribs are in her future. I, must <laughs> I say. bet so. It seems like it's all in the family. Uh, in the realm of things nobody asked for, Myra, <laughs> uh, KFC is cooking up. Uh, they're making new Crocs. They teamed up with Crocs to make these uh, wonderful clogs uh, with, uh, no lie, chicken scented drumstick charms. Okay, so these are Crocs. Yes. Um, and that's a metal charm? It's, it's, it's a little charm and it's scented 
like like chicken because that's that's what was missing in our footwear all these yeah, years. You know it what was, I mean? I guess. I think they stole my chicken scented foot idea, <laughs> which I've had for a while. Um, oh, I, I'd love to say that these probably won't sell, but I think I'd be wrong. <sighs> it's gonna it's gonna sell pretty well. I bet. Um, yeah, they're teaming up. Uh, Croc, Crocs and KFC. Very excited about this. Only fifty nine ninety nine for these Only? wonderfully stylish shoes. Look I say at you putting on the sell. I say you get them now and then avoid like when people are really uh, cranking the price up on the resale because yeah. you know these won't be around forever. No, got to get them while they're hot. Absolutely. Our last story of the day, Myra, is we are checking in with a stripper uh, in Dallas who had fell. Now, this was a big video, a big deal a couple days ago. Uh, TMZ had first shared the story. A stripper fell from a 15-foot pole uh, while doing her set. Uh, a ton of, uh, she, she suffered uh, jaw injuries, a couple of other injuries on her fall. Uh, really rough, but you know, the good news is, is she had uh, her jaw wired shut successfully. Ah. Uh, successfully, successfully, Myra. but yes. still, yes, yeah, still maybe uh, a, a tough surgery. Now, this is really interesting. Now, the strip club said that they weren't going to pay for any of the bills. They said she was a part time employee only and wasn't entitled to workers comp or anything like that. So she set up a GoFundMe and very, very quickly, Myra, if you'd believe it, the goal was met. I do believe it, Ferris. Well, I, for I, all the things in this headline, I do believe it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, you know, it's funny. I saw a commenter say that you know, uh, when she fell, she did a GoFundMe, got all her funds. When he fell, he just got drug tested and forced to go back to work. <laughs> uh, he said he's in the wrong business. I'm starting to think I'm in the wrong business too. I could see why this would be a trending story today. <sighs> Absolutely. We just hope she's okay. Um, I do got to say, I have different feelings about pole dancing after this. <laughs> I don't think I'll be going to those pole dancing classes anymore. Ah, oh, that's right. We've talked about, yes. uh, you know, your pole dancing Nobody party. shows up to mine. And I think I see why now it was dangerous. Uh, yeah. Definitely going to uh, sign a waiver next time. Live a little less on the edge. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I will now. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. All right, thanks. That is what is trending today. We'll be right back. That's all our time tonight. Thanks so much for watching KSAT News at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.